Rodan has brought us 1956's Rodan. Look to the sky. Beware. Because he's coming. See you there. <laughs> What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to week two of our Spooktober favorite series over here at Dissect That Film, where every week of October, one of us picks a film to cover as one of our Spooktober favorites. And today we are talking about Dan's pick, 1956's Rodan, or as it was called in the United States, Rodan, the flying monster. Fancy. I like, is that his belly or was that his back? His back. This is, they, they stopped doing this after this first film. Well, they had the gold and the I green. Did, to be honest, I don't even remember seeing that in either versions of the movie. Yep. Yeah, it's, you see a quick, few quick shots of the back, but not quite as many. Yeah. This is, uh, yeah. So we're talking about Rodan. This, we're talking about the oldest film covered on this show. Yep. It is now the oldest movie we've ever covered, which is uh, crazy. And also, we need to make this episode the highest downloaded episode of the month, okay? Because Dan always brings the goods to Spooktober, yes. and no one, no one gives a, cha- a chance. You know, we did Day of the Dead in year one. Hey, Day of and, the Dead was good. And, and, and no one listened to it, and I'm very sad because that movie's awesome, and no one talks about it enough. We talked yeah. about it. And no one listened to it. So go back and listen to our Day of the Dead episode. Then last year, he brought us Phantoms, a movie. Fucking Phantoms, yeah. Yeah. Come on. A, a, just a, an underrated uh, sci-fi horror movie. Ben Affleck. That cast is stacked. That was an awesome episode. Yes, it And was. not a lot of people listened to it. So you need to Fucking listen to those people. episodes. Come on. No. I know we're covering <laughs> Trick or Treat. We've just released J- Freddy vs. Jason last week, which wasn't technically part of our Spooktober series. But come on. There's a bonus. Give Dan's movies a chance. But he brought Where's... probably the most obscure. I wouldn't say obscure. He probably brought a movie that I feel most people probably don't think about nowadays unless they are diehard kaiju fans like you. Probably. Um, I never thought about this movie. I've thought about this character because I've seen him before. Yeah. I mean, of course, yeah, of course. Uh, they recreated him beautifully, in my opinion, in Godzilla King of the Monsters from 2019. I think he looks I agree. phenomenal in that movie. Yeah, he is awesome. This is the origin. This is the beginning. This is the first time mm-hmm. you see this character. And uh, it was an, ad- an experience to behold. So... Dan, why don't you explain to us why you chose Rodan as your pick for Spooktober? Why is it, why do you think it qualifies? Well, this is why I think it qualifies. And further reading after I've made my choice has solidified why I made my choice. I was going to say, I need to know this too, because I couldn't figure it out. Okay, cool. Perfect. Uh, Unfortunately, we'll get to that in a minute, why some of that was lost in the version that you watched with me. But... Uh, I growing up, I remember watching this movie uh, quite a few times with my dad. Any of these t- kaiju stuff, obviously. And you know, my dad always talk about this quite a bit. This was it's it's really the opening of this film, and it was really the first proper horror film that Toho had done. Though they ended up would do other ones um, that we could always uh, do for future. Oh yeah, uh, spooktobers. But yeah, this it's just it's mainly the the beginning part of this movie, and it is. Far better represented the Japanese version than it is the English version. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of the the tone of the English of the the English version of this film fucks up the beginning of this movie. Even though I still thought it was scary when I was little, uh, but yeah, it, it, it's mainly the beginning. It's the build up and everything, and it's usually I'd say about the first third ish of the film kind of feels like, it just feels like a really decent like horror film from of the time. And you got people like, this isn't scary, this isn't horrible. It, this is the 50s, too. They didn't have slashers and people, like, folding inside out and turning into demons and shit or, you know, they shit like that. They just had fire demons. Huh? They just had fire demons. They did, but not in a, yeah. It was different. It was a different time. Yeah. I, I wore an onion on my belt, which was the style at the time. <laughs> but, 
yeah, that's this is exactly why I built it. I, my dad had nostalgia for it. I have nostalgia for it. I think this is a great introductory to the character. It was the first standalone kaiju movie Toho did after the original Godzilla. And uh, I think it's the best, even though I love other iterations of the character, I think this is the best design, my favorite design for Rodan. It has some really memorable shots, uh, uh, effects, and just shit that really stuck with me as a kid. And even now. So, a- Angela, I take it your first experience with this movie was because of Dan? Oh, yeah. Was this one that you had seen a long time ago? We've watched it before. I don't know how it. It's been a while since I've seen it. I do remember parts of it, but it's it. Ow! I just poked myself with it. (laughs) The wrist. The Rodan loves likes it rough. Well, it's sharp. It's not supposed to be sharp. And see, that was kids' toy from the nineties. They were supposed to murder you. Remember? (laughs) There's yeah. I was gonna say they weren't supposed to be sharp. What are you talking about? Well, one side's sharp and the other side is not. So <laughs> that was that was very odd to get poked. Maybe with some it. child from Japan like filed down one of the ships, <laughs> like murdered his parents or something, or our, our like, younger brother with. Do, do it's an imported to toy. I don't spray know. Spray luminol or something. Maybe I. F- you know I don't want to. Let's just keep it a secret <laughs> for everybody. No. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm pretty sure we've watched this a few times. Surely. Not just just once. We've watched so many. Kaiju movies that I can't keep up with. It's bleed together. With, with when, sometimes I'm like, wait, this happened in a different movie. And I'm like, well, no, I'm just remembering wrong. That's okay. That's how I do with your whiny CW movies or shows. So that's what it does to me, too. Oh. <laughs> I just All of her, like, I know she likes them, except for Gilmore Girls, because that one I know, because I've seen Gilmore Girls. I'd catch him standing at the door watching. Yeah, because when we like, first if got you just together, wanna, If you just want to watch, yeah. you can come sit down. It, but, like, some of those, like, she she likes her. That's, that's fine. I just poke at her for it a little bit. All CW. But I just, they just have that, that stink to them, right? Like, I just know what they're, like, I watch them, like, oh, it's one of your shows. And it's fine that you like them. <laughs> I'm not sure how much I like them right now. I love you. We're rude. So, yeah, my first experience, 100% watching this movie. As as everyone on the show knows, I, 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 if you don't know who we are, I'm uh, I'm I'm the host, Brett, and that's Dan and Angela. I didn't even introduce us in the beginning <laughs> of the episode, so cool. You, clearly, hopefully you've listened to the show already. Uh, you know who we are, but it's if you haven't, funny. sorry, we usually introduce ourselves at the beginning, but clearly I'm trying to figure out a cool intro for Spooktober episodes, and I'm failing epically, so... Yeah. We got the point across. By we by year ten, I'm gonna know how to do this <laughs> podcasting thing, guys. We're we're only in year three, so we got a long time before oh, yeah, things will start to roll right. Um, yeah, first time watching this movie, but as, as everybody knows, uh, the only reason I've really dove into kaiju movies is because of Dan and Angela. Uh, you know, doing a podcast with two people who are huge fans of the genre, you're going to start to watch them yourself. And also, we do a monster show on Patreon, so that's a, you know another reason why I've been watching. I have watched more movies from the fifties in twenty twenty three than I have my entire life in the yeah. in the thirty one years before this year. <laughs> I, yeah, have, dude. I have, I have maybe just finally seen realized what you've been missing. We're, we're I just have. Prop- we're propagating it, man. People, you, you, if people forget about it, then nobody's going to watch it. Exactly. And the funniest thing is, is I, you know, we're as as I just mentioned, we do a monster show over on Patreon, and most of the movies we've been covering, at least since we've started the show, have been movies from the fifties, which is pretty crazy. And we've covered a movie uh, from uh, the director of Rodan, who was also the director of the original Godzilla in nineteen fifty four, uh, Ishiro Honda. We've covered one of his movies on the Monster Zone, uh, Varin, and. Yeah, he is, I mean, this guy is the godfather of kaiju movies. Like, he literally introduced uh, Godzilla to the world. He introduced, you know, this character, Rodan. He introduced Mothra. Uh, Was he the one who introduced, did he introduce Mechagodzilla? No, it was a different, it was a different director. Okay, well, his last. Tanaka was like the producer that did a bunch Mm. of it, but he did do King Ghidorah, though. He did his last movie was Terror of Mecha Godzilla. That's why I think it was kind of on my mind back in nineteen seventy five. I don't remember. So Ishiro Honda, I don't. 
he didn't direct all the Godzilla movies. It was another no. guy, June Bakuda, maybe that ended up directing some of them in the seventies and sixties too. Uh, so he but, did. Sorry to cut you off. Go, no, he, please. So no, he please. did the original Godzilla in nineteen fifty four. Mm-hmm. He did uh, King Kong versus Godzilla, Mothra versus Godzilla. Uh, he he also was the one who I'm guessing introduced Ghidorah. Because he did, he directed Ghidorah, the three headed monster in 1964. Mm-hmm. Uh, destroy all monsters. All monsters attack. Uh, oh, God. He also uh, directed a movie called Frankenstein versus Baragon. Fucking awesome, dude. I've seen Listen. the cover of that movie and I'm like, I need to watch this. Where is did this? This is on Tubi. Need, I need to watch it. You need to watch this, but then you need to watch the superior sequel. Okay. Well, which is War of the Guardians. I uh, yes, I did see that he directed that. He also did uh, some Ultraman stuff for TV in the seventies. Mm-hmm. Uh, he retired in nineteen seventy five, but he was friends with Akira Kurosawa, who was a who was of course an iconic, legendary director. Uh, he brought him back, and he actually worked with him up until like nineteen ninety two. Nice. Uh, so he was pretty much like his right hand man uh, until until his death. But yeah, this man is the godfather of kaiju. I mean, the fact that he introduced all these iconic characters that are still so big today, um, you know, Honda is a legend. Yes, sir. So this movie was, uh, of course, directed by Honda. He, uh, the screenplay was done by T- uh, Takeshi Kimura and Tekio Murata. Uh, the story was done by Ken uh, Kuronuma. Uh, it stars Kenji Sahara and Yumi Surakawa. I'm not going to go through the whole cast because there's a lot of characters kind of and a lot of characters that are just kind of there. Uh, they talk, they do a couple lines. And um, so from what I've read, the writer Ken Kurunama, uh, Kurunuma was inspired by a incident that happened in 1948 in Kentucky where a fighter pilot actually crashed after supposedly uh, pursuing a UFO. And so okay. it kind of influenced him into coming up with, well, instead of it being a UFO, which is what a lot of the characters think Rodan is when mm-hmm. he first shows up. Because the thing about Rodan is he kind of just shows up in this movie. It's like, it's yeah. not, there's no introduction to him. There's no, like when you watch King of the Monsters, which we've covered, we covered fucking forever ago in our third ever episode, Rodan is like birth from a volcano. And so yep. you get this this epic introduction to Rodan. Of course, he like destroys this this uh, village that's below the volcano. A very epic entrance. I love it. Rodan just shows up in this movie. Yeah. Like things happen, and then like it's literally like, oh my god, we're in pursuit of a thing. We don't know what it is. Gotta go. <laughs> it's like it's flying yeah. at supersonic speed, and they're like, whoa. And it's like <laughs> this, and then like then we get like what how, where Rodan came from, like or yeah. So then you get the background of, of yeah everything yeah. there, but uh, kind of neat instead of just instead of us just going like you know in or chronological order. Yes, to kind of like double back. <laughs> <laughs> um, cool fact that I saw is that for the American version of this movie, uh, George Takai was the first Japanese American actor to do uh, English voiceover. For, um, if, for a for a film, he was like the very first actor to do it, and he does th- about seventy five percent of the voices in mm-hmm. the English dub. Which I watched. Uh, D- Dan Dan had did as well, but I watched the original Japanese version, which is uh, it's a Criterion. Well, watch it. It's uh, <laughs> it's on the Criterion Channel, but I guess it's also it's also on Max right now. It's also ten minutes longer than the core cut of the movie. So the original cut is is an hour and twelve minutes. Or maybe that's the American version. Cut it down ten minutes. Yeah, it's it this movie. Trying to find like certain information on this movie is just baffling. It's just like it, you're just like, what is going on? They got different years. It's all over the place. But the Japanese version is an hour and twenty three minutes, and the American version is only an hour and twelve minutes. Like I said, the Japanese version is on Max, and then the English dubbed version is on Tubi. It's on Freebie, and they look. So much different. They look different. They run differently. Sometimes you feel like you're watching a different movie when you're watching the, especially the American version. So the Criterion version looked really nice. Like it was full screen. It, it, it like it just looked like it was cleaned up very well, of course. And then you watch the English version 
on Tubi, and it looks like it was ripped Mud. from a VHS from like Mud. literally nineteen, like whenever VHSs were, <laughs> or a laser disc pull. I don't know what it was, but there were parts where I, it was there was like dark areas of the movie, and I went, "What am I looking at right now? I can't see anything." But I already had watched the part before, so I already I know what was going on. But I'm like, "Did you have flashbacks to the one movie that you you, you know you couldn't watch because it was so oh dark. the Requiem? difference." The difference is this is a good movie. I <laughs> 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 yeah. argue with this being a better film. That is definitely. Yes. Uh, uh, I recommend, to be honest, they're both very short movies. They're both very easy movies to get through. Mm -hmm. So yeah. watch them both. I recommend anyone out there who hasn't seen this movie or anybody who has maybe only seen one version, watch the other version. Because you're going to be, yep. you, you're literally going to sit down and watch a completely different film. It ends yeah. the same way. There are, of course, it is the same movie, but they just complete like the English version just completely cuts parts out of it. They yeah, literally make like it tonal they, differences and shit. Tonal differences. You figure out like the dialogue is different too in certain parts. Mm -hmm. Like they change names of things. Like cities are mm -hmm. named different because they. Yeah. So like um. The city that Rodan destroys later in the movie, I think it was uh, Sesabo. Is what they call it. Yeah. yeah. So there they is it. what they show a shot where it does say Sesabo on it. So that's what you think it is. And but it's technically Fuka Fukuyoka. Yeah. Yeah. I I'm, I apologize for my horrible pronunciations of all these Japanese names and cities. Uh, but in the English dub, they wanted to make sure they didn't want the actors to, you know. <laughs> fuck up you know because of the of the name of the city so they didn't want to use that name so they just they changed they they just like oh we'll just do accessible because it it's easier for them to say and so it's yeah. yeah they changed that they changed the name of the mountain that rodan lives in the volcano technically yeah you're right and I, it's also i had read that was because there was actually a pretty a larger american military base yes in Sesebo, yes. so yep. like american people be, might, might be more familiar with that name um, I do want to. I do want to. Of course, we got to shout out the man who is inside the Rodan costume, oh, or the yeah. Rodan suit. Uh, Haru, uh, can pronounce his name for me. Help me out here. Haru, Haru Nakajima. Thank you. Uh, he is also the man inside the suit for Godzilla. I think he was Godzilla till when? Nineteen eighty-five. He was Godzilla up to seventy-two. Okay. And then a different gentleman took forward place at it, but there was a few roles where he didn't do Godzilla. It was sixty-eight. Yeah, that's 68. 67, Son of Godzilla, because they needed a taller actor. Though he did do some oh, shots. Oh, that makes that makes sense. Yeah. But Harun also did Rodan, like you mentioned. He was one of the Gargantuas. He was Baron. He was yes, Baragon. Yes. He was tons of Ultraman Kaiju. He is like like back in the day, because he did so big with Godzilla, he wasn't the only guy in the Godzilla suit in the original movie. Mm -hmm. There's another guy before him, but he quit. And Haru ended up taking over, but he's like he was like the guy. He was like the de facto guy. Once something big happened, like go to him, he can do it. He could do suit. I mean, he's he this man like, is a legend. I mean, this man yeah, almost died making this movie. Yeah. There is a shot yeah. in this movie of him falling into the water, which is a shot they use in the movie, but it was an accident because a line snapped. He falls into the water. They keep the shot, and he almost drowned. Mm -hmm. They had to reattach the wires, and the sh and they used the shot of him getting pulled out, but the the wires almost snapped again because the suit was so waterlogged. It weighed an extra like a uh, hundred pounds, and it already weighed one hundred and fifty pounds, mm -hmm. which is just crazy. So yeah, this man uh, and he and yeah, there were times where they were like, "You could, you know, we'll stop, we'll we'll you know, we'll chill. We could we could figure other things out." He's like, "No, nah, let's do this." Like he was all about it. This man just never quit. He was a he was a legend. There's a there, there's a few shots, and I'm sure we'll talk about them when we do the movies. I can't remember what movie it is, but I, I know like a there's actually figures of it of like him where he's like half out of the Godzilla suit. I want to say it's um, Mothra or King Ghidorah or Invasion of the Astro Monster somewhere in that three room three movie run where he's just sitting there half out of the suit like just chilling. Like That's in between awesome. shots, just chilling. Like he's yeah. fucking view toes hot as shit in that suit. He's got a towel oh, over yeah. his shoulder. What's up? I do. Oh, well, I've got one of uh, Akira. Not Akira. Gosh, uh, Aging Tsuburaya. Yeah, I mean, 
it's crazy looking at filmmaking back then. It's it, it you know watching all these movies from the fifties so over the course of the last like, three four Nothing months. Samson got you. Is it's one of those things that I have been able to appreciate the art of filmmaking, especially with these kaiju movies. It's just absolutely bonkers. Because now it's yeah, all dude. CG. You know, you got in fact even Toho is even turning yeah. to CGI when it comes to Godzilla because you know is uh, is this it's it's more of the question like is the suit work even worth it anymore like is it, like are we going to be able to make it, you know is it it's probably a lot safer and cheaper if we go the CGI route yeah yeah but, but it, it, it's like it's, we've talked about but it's it. not the same it's not it's not yeah. it, it'll never be the same i love the monster versus godzilla i love what they're i love what godzilla looks like in this upcoming godzilla was it minus what's it called is it minus 1 yeah minus 1 minus 1 yeah i i think it looks fantastic but yeah, the suit, getting to see like these actors, you know, being physical, you know, doing the suit work. Do I think the Rodan suit looks good? Not particularly, but I'm also looking at it at it being 19, in you know the late 1950s, and this is a brand new character, and they're trying to figure things out for the first time. You know, this is a flying character. You know, it was like Godzilla came out two years before. And he was just you just put a guy in a suit, and he was just walking around. Like this yeah. guy had to look like he was flying, or well, I know the flying shots were all models, but mm-hmm. you know when he had to stand on top of the building and he's like flapping his wings, and yes. it's a lot of physicality there, and it's freaking awesome to see. I, you know, it, you know, my wife, you know, she she doesn't really like engage in the movie the whole way through, but she's sitting next to me watching the movie and like seeing, you know, even the scenes with the the little uh, caterpillar things, the dragonfly larvae there. I can't remember what those things were called. Megan Urine. Megan Urine, yeah. And she's like, man, practical effects are awesome. I went, yeah. Yeah, they are. Yeah, they Fuck are. Yeah. I'll have to, I, I'm, did, did, uh, don't tell me now because I want to know at the end, but did she give a verdict as what she saw? No, she didn't give a verdict. She just was impressed by all the, uh, the practical effects that she saw and like how it, cool it was. Like, like, yes, you see wires. Yes, you see, you know, things that I think if a movie was made like that nowadays, people would, be like, oh man, that's horrible. But like, we're talking 1956. I mean, look at look at Ghidorah, for example. All all three of all his heads like bobbing all, all the time, and there's just like, puppets. Were puppets. Yeah, they had so, to literally. There was literally wires but, that just like like marionette. Yeah. And like you see, in, oh, I love it. In other uh, scenes, you see planes flying past, but you you're there on strings. Yeah. But see, but it's it's almost like that. It's just a really cool experience to. to get it's to relatable, this. not relatable because you are have been in a suit, but it's relatable because you you know that there's a person in there. Right. Well, you got to think, and I mentioned this in, in Ballroom. And I'm going to mention this probably eight, eight million other episodes. If you look at the stuff that was made in the United States at the same time, and these guys would have a smaller budget. Or not, or, or a similar budget to lower tier pictures. I'm not talking about beasts from Twenty Thousand Fathoms or anything like that. That had stop motion. So I'm talking about anything else. This stuff shits on all that, yeah. like production quality, with the yeah. miniatures, the suits, the effects. Mm-hmm. You know, I just and I'm I'm biased, so somebody like, oh, you know, that's fine. If you have a counterpoint, I'm 100. percent If you like American movies, look better. All the power to you. But I, I just. I just love these movies, dude. And I think that for those, the, the dedication shows at the end product. But yeah, just I, I think just their their sheer determination and, and want to make a great film for a very small budget shows. It's like when you look at like the original Evil Dead. We all know that was a really low budget, but it looks great for what they had. Right. And they made what they had work. And that's what all these movies do for me. Especially the Toho stuff. Well, it's like they oh, yeah. take the, the, um, the city... The, the buildings in the city, yeah. they have one shot. <laughs> For a lot of that, yeah. The miniatures yeah. are fucking the, wonderful. And they do it so well. Yeah, remember, remember, guys, remember, if you're on Patreon, we did do beginning of the end, and that's just grasshoppers on, like, cardboard <laughs> pictures. So, I mean, Bird Eye Gordon, that legend. Worked. Guess what, it guys? Worked. Guess what? If you're, a page, if you're a Patreon member at the $5 tier, we're covering another Bird Eye Gordon film for this month. Fuck, we are, aren't we? And we sure guess, are. We just name it the bird eye gorge. <laughs> yeah, we have our first ever episode of the of the Monster Zone was uh, Food of the Gods, which is a bird eye Gordon was one of his later films, and then uh, yeah, we covered one of his earlier ones with Beginning of the End, and I can't remember what was it. What's the name of the one we're doing for this month? We haven't uh, recorded it yet, but as you as war. you hear this, it might be out. 
War of the Colossal Beast. There it is, which I think is yeah. just about a big man. <laughs> and, and we're, and we're, <laughs> he's a really big, big man. He's a big, a big, big man. man. SpongeBob, a big, big man. <laughs> but uh, dude, I don't know. But we do have another, but ironically, you know, actually, I think last month we did a Harryhausen movie in an We I did, yeah, movie. yeah, we're yeah. Doing another Harryhausen the be- movie. The beauties of uh, 50s... But, Fifties monsters movie, monster movies, where you have a lot of, uh, you know, for, uh, you know, in Japan it was a lot of the kaiju stuff. Uh, not even just Japan, but uh, you know, in a lot of Asian countries, you had kaiju movies, but mostly you know, uh, originating from in in Japan. And then in the United States, you had a lot of monster movies with the stop motion stuff from you know Harryhausen and uh, and Willis and uh, you know from those uh, stop motion legends and. It just, you know, watching, like I stated before, watching all these movies over the course of the last few months, you know, for multiple shows, it has been such an experience. And I have loved, even the ones that I don't think are technically good, even the ones like the Bird Eye Gordon ones, you know, you know, Bird Eye Gordon, he tried his hardest, man. And it's some, it just, it just wasn't, they just weren't for me. Like Food of the Gods is fine, uh, but beginning to the end is a rough one. Uh, But you know, it's just, it's great to see these early, you know, seeing, like, the evolution of movies at that time. Yeah, yeah. Which well, it's like, like, it's like, I mean, it's not like Ed Wood bad, so. <laughs> no, he was, <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Anyway. One day, one day we'll cover one of his. Oh, uh, we movies. will. We will. Um, uh, Cinematography on this was done by uh, Isamu uh, Ashida. Uh, music was done by Akira Ifakube, who go. also did Godzilla, also no. was the man behind his signature roar, mm-hmm. which I think is awesome. It was released December 26, 1956, distributed by Toho, of course. It ran at 82 minutes. It Its budget was 200 million yen, which what was the, what's the amount on that in American dollars? Two million. Just two million. Two, cut off the last two zeros. Okay. Two million dollars. So two million dollars, and it yeah. grossed about one point four million dollars at U.S. Uh, but it, it was one hundred forty three million yen. So, and and I, I mean Parker, we're talking about before. Is I, I kind of have, I don't know if that's one hundred percent accurate. If the budget's one hundred percent accurate, or whatever on here, if one of those is, yeah, for inflation I'm, or what, because. I know this movie was, at least from my knowledge, was was received fairly was received well in Japan because it's a popular film in Japan, and it was also received fairly well even here in the United States. So I don't know. It didn't seem like a movie like that's a bomb, but I don't know. I I wasn't there. So, oh yeah, this is an interesting read. So, uh, it grossed an estimated four hundred fifty thousand to five hundred thousand during its opening weekend at seventy nine theaters in New York City. Uh, sev- several theatrical circuits, including RKO, announced that the film broke the box, o- box office records for a science fiction film. Mm-hmm. Joe Dante, in 1962, uh, okay. was a writer. You know, Joe Dante, the director of yep. Gremlins. Yeah. Uh, he was writing for a, a magazine called The Famous Monsters, and he included this film in as one of his 50 worst horror films Fuck you, Joe Don. <laughs> Declaring it another routine Japanese prehistoric monster on the loose melodrama, which was inferior to many U.S. productions. Okay. He's full of it. Wow, okay. Uh, In oh. 1962? Yeah. Okay, what are you comparing wow. it to? I mean, uh, like, you say like... Yeah. Okay. Crazy. Okay. Uh, it has a, 72, a 75% on Rotten Tomatoes for critics and holds a uh, with an average rating of 5.9 out of 10. I don't know. We'll talk about our. I mean, I, I mean, we. I feel like we know. We know Dan's thoughts on this movie. He picked the movie. Ah. He's a huge kaiju fan. I'm. I'm feeling Angela kind of has similar thoughts on it. But we'll we'll hear more about our thoughts at the end of the show. But let's start talking about the plot. So please, as uh, I, I my notes are based off the Japanese version, so it's going to have more mm-hmm. stuff. But we will be talking about uh, the differences between the Japanese version and the English dubbed version. So, yeah. So the movie starts on Mount Aso, which is what the what the mountain is called in the Japanese version. Yep. What is it called in the U in the English version? I didn't. Is it I, Moyo or something like that? 
I'll I'll look. I'll look while you're going. I don't remember. I, I honestly I was kind of like, oh yeah, this is the English version. I was like, this shit's a little bit different. And I was like, I usually watch a Japanese version. So you can right click and open. Yeah. Window. So a the difference between the opening of this movie or this version in the English version is that in this version it starts at the mining city or the mining town where the the miners are coming out of the mine. They're having their conversation. They're talking. There's a guy named Goro. And then there's a what was the other guy's name? Oh, uh, it was I know. To... the first guy they find who dies. Yeah, because I always remember Goro. Yes, there was there was Goro who you, yeah you literally see him for about point two seconds, uh, but he's mentioned a lot in this movie. But uh, yeah, he is they, oddly. A they're lot. fighting. These two guys are like getting in fisticuffs. They're like asking why are you fighting all the time. They also get in a tussle inside this like, scene shortened the building. Yes, it is. Be- because in the English version, this movie opens up with a voiceover about the hydrogen bombs, about the introduction Silent to the hydrogen bomb. bombs. And, you know, it's of course, it's actually showing actual footage of the first hydrogen bomb testing. And mm-hmm. the uh, the the dub for this was done by... Oh, where did I see it? Uh, Key Luke, who is a famous Chinese voiceover uh, actor, uh, Chinese American actor, uh, who's been, you know, was doing it as uh, he was also Mr. Wing in the Gremlins movies. He was the uh, old man who ran the, oh. the shop in Gremlins. Oh, that's cool. Okay. So pretty cool. But yeah, he's talking about the whole hydrogen bomb thing. And, uh, you know, you get to see the explosions and the aftermath. And of course, it's like, you know, this is a story about one of those, you know, the one of the effects of what these bombs can do. And it just shows an egg. And then it shows the guys coming out of the mine. But then it doesn't really it kind of like quickly shows a fight. And then it just jumps. It yeah. literally bypasses like. Them going down into the mine. Them having this whole thing and then the whole fact of like something happens down in the mine where they all have to evacuate, but Goro and the other guy he was fighting with don't come back up. Yeah, because the, I like, the thing I like is like the whole fight's going on, and there, it, it, and of course the Japanese version, so I'm going to reference more, is they're like sitting there and they're trying to break it, like, guys, come on. You know, yeah. y'all work together. You guys got to stop this fight and bullshit. Like, it's just this long occurring thing. He just reaches over to the other dude, grabs his fucking notepad and rips it out of his pocket and they start fighting again <laughs> it's just so good dude it's so fucking good i just like in the yeah. english version though he's just like you do this again you're fired and you too you do it again girl you're fired and they're just like mm. and then they and walk it just away ends. And it just ends <laughs> like it took the i mean even they tell him to stop right but it's just that extra little bit of the other uh, dude being an asshole and i just fucking love it so the the i guess they're mining black diamonds out of these mines I uh, they mentioned that in the Japanese about. version. Uh, we get to see him go into the mines with the cool little choo-choo train. And again, the, the little carts cool. is like choo-choo and just yeah. down in the mine. They took it down to the mine. Cool. Shit. Like the atmosphere is cool. Like I like the inside of the mine shaft. You uh, in the um, so in the English version, it's narrated by uh, a character, one of the main Shigeru. characters, a uh, Sagero. Yeah, and. Yeah, he's the one who's like narrow narrating pretty much everything here. You tell everybody that too. You find out that the mines have been flooding and they want to know why. So he's got to go. Be. Yes. So Seguro has to go down into the mine and figure out why it's why it's flooding. And they end up finding one of the miners who disappeared, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's just yeah, kind of floating. It's not there. Goro, it's the dude that No, was it's the other him. guy, right? Because yeah. You find out, see, originally, I thought Goro was with the woman that Segura, like, runs into outside the, the thing, but it's the woman that he was supposed to marry, and it's Goro's sister. I was all lost in translation yeah, on, Shigeru, on that Yeah, Shigeru is with Goro's sister. Yes. yes. And, see, but the funny thing about all of this is in the English version, Shigeru narrates this a whole beginning over all yeah. of this bullshit almost yeah. all of this bullshit and it ruins the setup yeah because like the beginning of this movie in the japanese version like because like i would watch english first and then went back and watched the japanese one or i watched japanese one is it's like watch the japanese yeah one. yeah but it's just it's such the atmosphere so much better because they're all pissed about it but they're on the mine cart and you just kind of hear like mine noises and shit in the background just going on it's all quiet it's not really music it's just them 
the noise of the mine and them kind of conversing with people coming in and out. Like they cut out the scene of the guys going into the mine and the guys coming out of the mine, like, Hey morning, morning, like shift change, you know, yeah. like to kind of set up, you know, what's going on here. It's not just guys walk into a mine. Like it's trying to set up something here and it's just, it just, it's all fucked with the narration. I think. So yeah, they get out, they find out the guy's dead. You get the whole situation, like where the wife shows up wanting to see, oh. wanting to see him. It's this is, this is a tough scene. Because the you know what makes it worse is when the baby starts crying and it doesn't stop crying and you're yeah. like goddamn, yep. In the, the English version, to stop her. it's like fuck this, <laughs> like literally yeah. they're just like it was Goro. Why do you think that was Goro? You want to have a bit <laughs> like type type thing? And I was like, okay, that just killed the entire mood of that entire scene by just then yeah. having this really quick. And it and it's usually just I mean this is fifties you know, voiceover work. So mm. it's, it's very clunky and just kind of yeah. doesn't fit. I know that like George Takai did like seven voices in this, in yeah. this movie. So like it, sometimes it just didn't sound right. And you just, well, and, you, that's why you need to hear it in its, in the, in its natural, uh, natural language, you know? Yeah. And when they show the guy's body, they're working on because mm-hmm. they show him like bring the body up and clean it, which is a cool touch. They, most yeah. movies wouldn't probably do this. They just have it covered up. Even at the Well, the English there. version, they didn't show it. It was the, the yeah, Japanese like, version. They could. Yeah. And they, they even say, um, cause the big difference in the English version, like, Oh, he's been mutilated by like, yeah. like tore up or whatever. And then the Japanese version, like the doctor's like, no, it was just like a, a weird, like blow to his head, but it, it wasn't. Normal. Didn't he say he like, got sliced. Know. It was kind of like a samurai. It, it was like the, the, the cut was like a samurai sword. Okay, he probably did, because I remember he mentioned a head wound, too, but he didn't talk about him being mutilated yeah. or anything like that. Because when you see the body, it doesn't look... No. I mean, he's obviously dead, but he doesn't look, like, completely fucked like they try to describe it in the yeah. U.S. version. You kind of get, you kind of get a, a, like, a... You know, you get this similar scene in Jaws, you know, almost 20 years later, where they get the yeah. whole, um, this wasn't an accident. You know, he was attacked this, type thing. This was no boat propeller. <laughs> <laughs> no, no offense to... American voiceovers that they do English, excuse me, voiceovers. The Japanese just have a way of conveying emotion. Oh, yeah. Certain things. Yeah, I agree. Like um, Iori. From uh, King of Fighters. If you have ever listened to his laugh, he sounds like a crazy man that has just gone through an episode. Yeah, and I don't think he. But like then it. you get the English version; it just doesn't convey that it's same. Not, it's not the same. No, it's the I don't, emotion behind. I see that in a lot of dub stuff. Like, and there's yeah. some good. There, no, don't get me wrong. There's some good vo- English voice actors that do really there, good dubbing. There's stuff. really. Yeah, there's, there's also a really lot of them that ones. don't do very good for it. But it's like they can't convey that emotion because they're not. They're just voicing to a screen. They're not like with somebody. Like yeah face-to-face face. yeah there's sometimes where like you know me and dan just talked about the gamera series on netflix and i watched the english dub Same. of the show because it was just easier for me to do that um maybe one day yeah. i'll go back and watch the watch it from the japanese um but there were some characters that sounded perfect like the english dub was like perfectly aligned with that character that felt like that character then there was some that just weren't i i, I agree but it, it's and like you, the thing you just mentioned though about how they're like talking about taking bets that it was Goro, and in in the English version, like uh, Shigeru comes up, he's like, "Guys, you you can't talk about this. You know, we don't want to scare the other miners or stop because it's a small mining community. Right. Like the mine community, they base their lives on this mine. Mm-hmm. That's it. Like this is a small place. You start spreading rumors, you can cause problems. And in the English one, they're like, "Hey, you, we just don't, you just don't want you saying shit because you're hitched up with his sister." And in the Japanese one, they're just like. And they're like, yeah, it's probably the guy's like, it's probably Goro. I was like, yeah, but just don't say nothing. They're like, yeah, all right, we don't like, really there's have, not that we don't subtext. Have yeah, yeah, and there's not that subtext. I'm like, yeah, you're saying that because it's your sister. I'm like, no, dude, why? Like, uh, why? <laughs> why would I say that? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> nah, he's just trying to cover uh, for him or some shit, which is like a weird context that's not there in the Japanese one. They're trying to add to the English one was just odd. They do it again later too. So yeah, they uh, they call the police. The police come in. Then they got to go back down into the mine. And then everybody gets, everybody gets killed. You get the the one this miner, the one miner gets killed. 
and the, the cop gets pulled on. They pretty much get pulled under the water. And then the one guy, this is a pretty scary moment where the guy, other, the third guy's like trying to call on the phone. And then you just see a shadow of a creature like attack him. And ah! yeah, the whole, I love the scream, like slide down the wall technique yes. that a lot of actors oh. do when they're getting attacked Classic. by something off screen. <laughs> Love the the because the first guy gets pulled under because they're joking about it. They're saying he's like, "Keep going." He's like, "Don't be such a fucking coward." Like, which they don't say in the. uh, No, they just keep the the guy in front just keeps telling the guy in the back to shut up. Pretty much, he's like, "Yeah," and and he's not talking. (laughs) And the English one, he's like, "What's that noise?" And you don't really hear it. No, you don't. In the English version, I was like, "Where's my fucking squeaky toy?" Like you hear it like right away, right away in that. That's why I was joking about since last week, guys. This is one thing about these monster movies at least the ones that i've seen lately that drive me crazy and i know i'm i probably when it comes to the the oh. kaiju community they're probably going to be screaming at me like you're just a bitch the fucking no like i appreciate the noises these monsters make but there are moments where it goes on for so long that i'm like can we just move on or just <laughs> can the monster just stop making noise because my brain hurts. I'm getting a headache right now. Like the sound that this yeah. thing makes. Parker <laughs> it, just doesn't like animal noises. Oh, it was fine like the... for a little bit, but there is a scene. The scene where, you know, cutting through. You know, the you know the guys are dead. They they come back. They find all the the people dead. Uh, they have to go investigate. They're like it can't They're be like, Goro. Yeah, it can't Goro be Goro. Anything against these guys? Right. Like they didn't really. So. Um, this is when you get like the graphic detail of like how each of these guys were killed. There was one like in the Japanese version, which was not in the English version. And we're going to keep saying that everybody's like, oh, my God, stop. It's like, no, we have to. We have it's to tell you the difference. In the yeah. Japanese version, they literally say one of the men had their head dangling by a strip of skin. Like his head was only attached by a strip of skin. I went. Oh. Yeah, because you graphic. only see him bring the two bodies in that yeah. are intact, yeah. <laughs> like not not the other. Well, one. I mean, also, you know, at this time, you're you're you yeah. you don't have the uh, the unless you did like a dummy of some sort, which I highly yeah, and that wouldn't do. That we see dummies later. Yeah, that that shit wouldn't fly. And they're point. comical. Oh, but it's fucking you know wonderful. what? I it, yeah, I understand. So. This is when you get the scene where the wives of the village start going after. Is it what is her name? Keo, uh, Keo, Keo. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's the one wife from that yeah, was going after. Right, that she like earlier. goes up to her and like is it's pretty much like blaming her because she thinks that Goro is the one who killed her husband. Uh, yeah. And of course, she's just like, I want to move away. I need to get out of here. And... At least the other woman stop her though. Like you can't do that to her. She doesn't have nothing to do with this. No. This is not her fault. And uh, so I feel bad for her as a character. Uh Shiguru is just like, no. Well, you know, uh, you know, yeah, maybe you do need to go, but we'll be together again at, at some point. And then this uh creature just <laughs> busts through this mega how do you say mega it? Neur- you could say mega neurin. Mega mega neurin or yeah. Dragonfly larvae, which is not mentioned in the American version, they do not call it a dragonfly larvae. <laughs> it's fucking awesome, dude. It just waddles its way Ooh. in. Oh, it looks fucking cool. It looks really cool. And this is when you get the sound. What else practice? Boom! Look at the back door. This is when you get the sound though that just doesn't oh. end. It breaks in. They run out. They're like monster. There's a monster in here. They, they everybody runs there. I love how I, I love when they hit speed up the film. When people are yeah. running just to get yeah. the scene to go quicker, it's just like <laughs> you just need like at some music. <laughs> at least they don't drag it out. Like, no, 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 no. Let's get to the shit. <laughs> so of course they get in there. I just love like I love the guy in the front who like drops down to one knee and just like watch out with his <laughs> with his pistol and just like pa pa. And then he gets attacked. Well, it's not even there when they walk in. It's not oh no, there. yeah, they're like, "Ooh, where to go?" Back. And then it just pops back into the door. He's like, "Oh, oh don't worry, I was just in the backyard, <laughs> just <laughs> starting a bonfire." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did you, he steals the one dude's pimp cane. <laughs> he, he's got the dude's pimp cane. Well, I, I, it's some stick for mining or some uh, private walking. So you know, whatever. He just has it in his little claw. And he's like it's waving amazing. it around. So yeah, he takes know. it, and uh, yeah, and then he just runs up this hill. He just he goes up the hill, just constantly making this noise. And this is when it just gets to the point where you're just like, oh my God, please stop. Please stop like, this just, thing. 
He's like, I just came to this house to borrow some sugar, and people started <laughs> shooting at me. He starts going, what the fuck's going on? <laughs> and they're <laughs> shooting at it, completely missing it. There, this looks like horrible shots, horrible shots. And horrible I just love the one where the guy. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I also right. love the fact that it this this creature looks like it's pretty far away, and then immediately it's on top of a guy. Like there's a guy Ooh, just guys! like. Ah! <laughs> just, two guys and this is when it great you get the shot where it grabs a guy and then i don't think this was on purpose the thing rolls down the hill Dude, with two little d- little dummy characters rolling down with them it's so oh, it's so good dude <laughs> whoever was it that one tripped and fell oh. or mega somebody's like oh you dropped it and it's like no it looks great keep it's the like- shot they did it with multiple shots in this movie. They just was like, oh, shit, that wasn't supposed to happen. Looks great. Let's keep it. Yeah, it it's like, fine. okay. Sometimes you only get one shot, dude. So it disappears. Of course, they, they, they're they like, oh, this has to be the thing that killed all the people. No shit, guy. <laughs> <laughs> Took you that long. <laughs> so you know, something else is coming along. This was oh, also. Wait. Yeah. <laughs> they also get alerted. Oh, it broke back into the mine and you get a whole scene with like a bunch of like high end guys, like trying to figure out how to stop this thing. And they get the alert, like, Oh, it broke through the barricade. It went back into the mine. This part, not in the American version, not in the English version, just completely cut it. It immediately shows them finding the guy on the ground outside the mine. Yeah. And so, (sighs) trying to i'm trying to like differentiate both versions here <laughs> I know. so reinforcements I know. are called and they venture down into the mines yes. they got some big old guns yeah like a light machine gun dude like, <laughs> yeah <laughs> and uh shiguro, I got is, to bleed. <laughs> shiguro is there leading him down there they find goro which is just a quick thing it's like goro and then it's like you never hear about it again and then they're like oh <laughs> shit there's one there yeah like, yeah but they did find him so they attack it they shoot at it and this is is this um this is when the ceiling drops on it right uh, this is when they drop what <laughs> shigeru's like i've seen this once in a movie and sends the mine car that's right after. and it hits it and it just like, Wah! and then falls into the water and, and another one boy slowly yeah, die yeah <laughs> <laughs> like oh poor guy and then the, That's the hole in the wall yes and uh there's another one and this is yep. when it attacks Saguru, but it also gets the like the whole you see like the fucking the ground is just collapsing like you see yeah, outside, outside it's just which is shown earlier in the english version which so dumb, i man. was very confused uh but yeah it kills this other uh thing the mega the mega, mega urine. urine i'm Dragon not gonna say i'm sorry i'm not gonna say that a lot uh, my apologies to everybody out there um, well the, actually one thing before that happens is i think this is a nice touch i don't think this is in the english version is is shigeru climbs into the hole to move the debris to get Goro's yes. body out yes they're trying to get his yep. body out yeah and that's when he gets attacked again yeah which is a nice um, touch we yeah so they go back they determine that it is a prehistoric dragonfly like it's Lark. the larvae from a prehistoric dragonfly. And they're like, oh, could it get so big? I'm so, I don't know what that, like, very confused. An earthquake well, happens. Enough, anything will get big. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so an earthquake happens. And I love when they call the earthquake. That's why Rodin has to They order. call the seismic, like, scientists there, the earthquake guys. They're like, hey, was that an earthquake? They're like, yeah. <laughs> so where was casually. it at? It's like, where was, was it? The crater? Yep. He's like, no. <laughs> well, no, in the English version, he does. They said, was it in the crater? And he goes, yes. But in the Japanese version, he's like, no, it was between the crater and the volcano. Which makes more sense, because that's or the mine. The crater and the mine. Oh, the crater and the mine. And I was like, oh, why did they just... Uh, they just they were cutting corners in that English version. I know, I like, they've cut, they ten that minutes English is a one? long time in a movie, guys. And <laughs> yeah, they cut clearly. ten minutes of it. Uh, <laughs> so... This is when the earth, like, you see more of the, just the earth start to disappear. Like, you see, like, more collapsing and everything. Yeah. And they, oh, also, you you determine that Seguro disappears. Like, he's just yeah. gone. They think he's dead. They, they're they still trying to find him. Like, they're sending people in there to go find him. Um, And they 
go to uh yeah they check out the crater yeah we're heading, yeah we're the falling in which is awesome in. it's real life it's actual landscape shots of wherever they film this movie split with a matte painting and it's yes. awesome it's, it's so good and i love the <laughs> fact that it's like okay you got to stand at this point and pretend like you're looking in a crater but it's actually just the continuation of the road um i love though in the japanese version the guys that are in the road and they're waving them down they're like uh in the japanese version i think they're like you know stop you know come here come here type thing but in the english version they're like stop turn around <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's like what and the guys just come out and they're just like up, up, gotta, up, up, gotta, up, up. <laughs> gotta check out this crater uh they find uh siguro down there he's uh crawling crawling around and he claps, and they, they find him, and they find out he has amnesia. So in the Japanese version, you get a whole montage of him trying to get his memory back. In the English version, it just cuts all that out. Yep. It's like, no, we don't need it, any character it, development. It literally, Fuck yeah, it literally shows... Uh, uh, oh, God. Kyo. Kyo, you know, talk to him, trying to see if he remembers her. And then, it yeah, it just cuts to her showing him the eggs and then he's like oh and he has the flashback yeah yeah no, in the no, japanese no. version he's going through like tests and stuff to try to regain his memory they're um, showing the mount the monster and megan and they're showing pictures of yeah, that and other like, things and i love how chill they are when they're talking to him in the japanese one where yeah. they're just like you know did you see this one it was most likely this one have you seen it and in the English one, they're like, have you, have you seen this thing? This is what it is. You need to remember. And I was like, why are we getting so aggressive? <laughs> the man had a Christ. fucking episode. Like, give him some space. Oh, my God. So he finally has the flashback after he gets like the if she shows him the eggs from her bird. And then he has like the who. And uh, it goes back to him That's being where babies come. From. Yeah. So we're in the cave. We see all the uh, the Megan Uren in there. You know, the, I love the two that like hug each other. They're like, I love you. <laughs> Let's embrace. Yes. And Let's then share valuable protein strands. Yes. We get a giant <laughs> egg and the egg hatches. And this is when Rodan is born. And That's... oh, sorry. Where Easter came. Is this where Easter comes from? Yes. Instead of a rabbit, it's a giant flying reptile. Just a slight mistranslation in the Bible. It's fine. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> just just so kidding. you find out. So pretty much this is when the uh, Megan Urin just kind of disappear from this movie because literally all they're there for is Rodan just eats them. Yeah. It's, it's, they're it's tiny. Little, like yeah, they're little. I love it. It's so good. Fucking dog. It's so good. Oh, oh dude. Man. I was. I was had some personal expenses come up and I was so wanting to buy a figure the Megan Urens because they're fucking awesome and I did not so get cool. one. So we get so yeah the, he witnesses the hatching of Rodan and does his does he get amnesia based on the fact that Rodan starts flapping its wings and it like causes it some like sort shock. of thing or he was just in shock and because he literally he is shock. like reacting to the hatching and then he just like, like totally, his face just falls, and he just goes blank and just turns around, and just waddles away. And I was like, I think it was just oh, too much. Okay. And he got, he suddenly gets really sweaty. Yeah. Fuck. <laughs> he went to the he went to the lemonade stand to ask for grapes and shit. <laughs> Welcome. Yeah. That's so, you, dear. thank you. Welcome. They get news about an upcoming eruption at Mount Asso. And this is, I'm guessing the eruption is when Rodan comes out and shows up, even though you don't actually see it. Partially. Well, yeah. I think it's when the ground all fell apart, but yeah. Yeah. I think it was all during so that. we are at a airport or Air Force base or some sort of base where there are jets flying around and one pilot is like, hey, there's an object here flying at supersonic speed. And they're like, supersonic speed? That's impossible. Running and I just the speed of sound. I just space. love that Rodan went in, it flies, it has the sound of a jet. It's just like, yeah. 
Yeah, oh, it's so good. But it's supersonic. <laughs> and oh, uh, I love great. the plane. You know, it's like, it fly right at me. And then the plane just splits into two. And just... Yeah. He was one of our best pilots. I love how they have the table with the bloody helmet and shit. I'm like, how'd you I get know, all that? I know, dude. Like, what, is, I'm surprised any of that shit's left. But it looks cool. I'm yeah. surprised any of it's left. It's wild. So they're we like, it together in yeah. Pieces. They're like, what is this? Is this a flying saucer? Is this an unknown weapon? What is this thing? And they also are getting stories that this creature is causing destruction, not just in Japan, but in China and the Philippines. Like, and it is able to hit different spots in like ten to fifteen minute intervals. And so that's when they come to the determination: there has to be another one. There has to be two of them. But did you notice in the Jap in the American one, like they spread it out? It's like even the Americans in Hawaii are yes. helping find them. The Amer- no, no, no. So it, yeah, it's not in the Japanese one. The, like, the Japanese production one's super localized. The uh, the production company that uh, distributed this movie in the United States were like, no, we need to add. Uh, we got to make sure we add United States stuff into the story, you know, to yeah. to relate to the American people, and it's like. No, we don't. No, they don't. But that's what they did that with all these, a lot of these movies yeah. back then. But it was like, it's like when they show the one dude, it's like, Colonel, whatever, whatever, checking fucking Hawaii, finding this. And like in the Japanese version, it's not. It's like Okinawa. <laughs> it's not Hawaii. It's like, it's like they get a little bit of Southeast mm-hmm. Asia, but it's like super localized around Japan, China, <laughs> Southeast Asia that yeah. all this is happening, not fucking Hawaii. Dude, my favorite part is this part coming up where they're talking about how the, the volcano it might erupt and yeah. it shows these two young lovers going to yes. do a photo shoot inside the crater. This is safe. In the I've English version, it's deep. hilarious because it's like, are you sure it's okay to go? He's like, yeah, it seems fine. And then it just asks the dude who's behind him. He's like, you think it's all right? He's like, man, probably. <laughs> 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 and I just I love like when this. they're driving away and you just hear the woman go, see you tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Nope. She should have said, I'll be right back. That would have fit. Oh, that would have been that would have been great. Perfect. <laughs> so they go there. They're not very smart. They're taking pictures. I love in the English version, though. It's just like, are you taking a picture of me or the crater? <laughs> He's like, I'm trying to get both. <laughs> but yeah, they're doing a photo shoot in this crater. It is the dumbest decision ever. And then Rodan just shows up, does a supersonic speed, very low to the ground, killing both of them. And then they talk about the was it possible double you know, did they double suicide? And they're like, no, they were too happy. They look too happy. And then they look at like negatives and are like, see, they were happy people. That couldn't have been it. Yeah. Well, see, like, what? The whole shot's <laughs> different anyway, because I, if I remember correctly from watching both in the English one, like Rodan comes down and like swoops in and then like it cuts to like, like the camera and like her shoe. But yes. in like the Japanese version, it actually shows them dead on the ground. Yeah. Then it shows the camera. Then it shows the yeah. shoe. Oh, yeah, I think yeah. it's supposed to imply like Rodan ate them, but in the Japanese version, Rodan didn't. It just fucking murked them. Yeah, it just flew by. That so this 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 scene confused me when it came to a scene later on because it's like, oh, so his if he flies low enough to the ground with a supersonic speed, it's going to kill you. I mean, clearly it destroyed a plane. Mm-hmm. It killed people just by flying over them at such high speeds. So when we get to this next, when we get to the scene later on, I'm going to be like, I, I'm going to tell you why I got confused. So yeah. they get the negatives back, as I stated, that, you know, proves that it wasn't uh, a double suicide. And, but they did get a shot of Rodan's wing. And so they're, mm-hmm. so they based on this picture, they're like, oh, it's some sort of pteranodon. Which which Rodan's name was originally Radon. That's its that's his Japanese name. But I guess mm-hmm. Radon is in the fifties. It was a soap uh, in the United States. So they said no, you got to change it to Rodan. And so that's why Rodan's name is Rodan and not well, Radon. Well, apparently Radon is also, of course, a, uh, a radioactive material or substance. Yeah, isn't it? Radon. Isn't there like radon detectors that you put in like yes. buildings and stuff like that? Yeah, well, radon is is somewhat common in our part of the country, which I did not know that. 
It's something my boss was talking about, and I was like, I want no part of that. It is <laughs> an odorless, invisible, radioactive gas. There you go. And that is a problem, apparently, where we live. Uh, or it can be. So... It has a half life of three point eight days. So yeah, I, I, still don't, deal with yeah. I don't want like a third arm. I've heard of it, but the, I I mostly remember radon because there was an episode of The Office where the HR guy puts radon detectors around the office, and the office manager Michael Scott is hates the HR guy Toby, and so he just keeps throwing them away. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, I, I, I've always known about the name change is like yeah. right on. He's still, he's still called that in Japan. Well, that's like, his Japanese name. So yeah. 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 Of course. yeah so like, it's like the street fighter thing. Right. Well, it's just like so Godzilla. Like, yeah. Well, yeah. Think about it. Well, like, yeah. well the, the final boss in, in street fighter isn't in, in bison. Yeah. It's, uh, I think he's Vega. Balrog yeah. was the mask guy and M bison was the Mike Tyson analogy we need to cover the street fighter movie with uh, i want to watch it with raw so with raw julia and uh <laughs> john claude van damme raw julia <laughs> plays m bison in that oh, movie so fucking good. gomez adams from the adams family he's so god good. damn next year <laughs> listen to ladies and gentlemen 2024 we're gonna be covering some bonkers movies i i, I we don't know so, what they are yet but we are gonna be covering some bangers dude maybe we should maybe we should just have like a, a like just a month of just like the shittiest movies we can find because like oh we're, yeah, we're we're gonna be focusing a lot on like older films i think next year but that we'll talk about that a little, we'll talk about that later um so they come to the determination it can't be a pteranodon it's too big they determine so another thing that they seem to not be able to match up right is when they talk about the uh this is a, this is a little bit after i'll cover what i missed but in the japanese version they determine that uh, Rodan's wingspan is 270 feet. Mm-hmm. In the English version, they said 500 feet. <laughs> Six <laughs> inches. Six inches. Eight inches, right, babe? I'm like, yeah. I'm like that is a vastly different size. Just like a 270 and 500. Ass. Well, they do. Holy they did that. Shit. If I remember correctly, they did that in the original. Yeah, in the original Godzilla when they. The Americanized version, oh, Godzilla King. Uh, well, they say he's 300 feet tall, but he's actually 150 because he's 50 meters. We don't know length. Right, yeah. So, they just want to make it seem bigger and than this. men exaggerate like, that all the time. Oh, right? absolutely. And it was a bunch of men that said it, so. There you go. Oh, I guess I, I, guess I went a little too fast with the whole uh, Segura figuring out or remembering the event, but we already yeah. talked about that. You, you got it in a nutshell. Yeah. You didn't really miss much. I mean, so, it's cool to watch, but you, you got yeah. the point. But, so they go back to the cavern where he says he saw Rodan, you know, be born from the egg, because they were going to try to find the remnants of the egg. Well, he they end up finding a piece of the egg, and I just love how it's this, like, big thing. And he's just like, this is it. This is a piece of the shell. And then he's just like, and the guy just comes over the pickaxe. It just reminds me of Yukon Cornelius from Rudolph. Yes! He just goes, ding, Peppermint! <laughs> just licks it. <laughs> That's right. That's <laughs> just peppermint slate. That's where it comes from. Uh, so, yeah, they determine it's an egg because it's made out of calcium. Oh it's a boy. <laughs> so, yeah, they talk about the fact that the hydrogen bomb testings are the reason why Rodan and the uh, Megan Urin woke up because they were kind of in like a hibernation for millions of years. Mm-hmm. And wrote so this is when Rodan emerges. You get to see, you know, of course he like you know flaps his wings a few times, and then I love this. This is when all the guys they just drive down with their jeeps, and they're just like, "Hey, hey we're gonna see what happens." And Rodan shows up, and then Rodan flies over them, and they're all fine. Why did it kill the two other people? But well, it no. didn't kill these people. Well, so so yes, but. This is a scene. This is one of the other. Okay, so I got three scenes that I love in this movie. And I'll get to the last one. We get to it, but the first one was the dudes getting pulled into water, like we talked about mm-hmm. in the beginning. This is the next one where, like you said, it flies over them. And I don't know if it was as low as it was for them. I don't know how his wind shit works. If it's just plot armor or whatever. But the one jeep that fucking drives away, and the wind <laughs> hits it and slams oh, it into yeah. a fucking rock. That's I was like, so Damn. good. But then I was like, why do those guys not die? <laughs> they're just uh, lying on the ground, right. like. Eh. <laughs> Quick, deploy the plot armor. <laughs> yeah. We can't kill these guys yet. 
<laughs> um, so this is when we get a dog fight with Rodan, and Rodan makes quick work of a couple of them. And oh, yeah. uh, this is when you get the shot of Rodan falling into the water. And this is the shot we talked about way earlier in the episode where the line snapped and it, yeah. and he falls into the water. But it just it looked cool. Um, <clears throat> they also kind of recreate this shot a little bit in King of the Monsters because Rodan does go into the water yeah. uh, during the whole pursuit there. Um, yeah, and you get the thing with the jet fighters being remade too. Yeah, I, listen, it, Rodan it actually, looked. Oh, Rodan is awesome in King of the Monsters. If you, there was an old release of this, and I wish I had it. There's an old VHS release of Rodan by I believe Video Treasures, and uh, they had some promotional art of this shot because obviously it wasn't intended to, but since yeah. they left it and they made like promotional art, and I just always remember that. Just yeah, because you get the mind. you get the the shot of him falling into the water, and then of course the the, the jets are shooting at the water, trying to get him, and then he emerges from the water. Mm-hmm. And uh, this is where, the, this was a, another shot where literally they had to get this because the line almost snapped because the mm-hmm. suit was so waterlogged. Uh, he emerges and destroys the bridge that earlier you saw a bunch of people just standing on. Yep, yep. And uh, I love this shot because if you look closely, there is a one of the, I'm guessing one of the people who works on the one of the buses was a woman and she's trying to she's like everybody back you know back on the buses she is smiling the entire time she has the biggest smile on her face she's like oh buses <laughs> yay don't mind the no one told anything. her that she's supposed to pretend like she could die at any moment <laughs> she missed that part of the line. oh like, so good everything's fine uh so in this version in the Japanese version, I should clarify, they shoot uh, Rodan enough where they're like, oh, he's only flying at half speed now because they injured him. Yeah, allegedly. Like, okay. Sure. And so this is when you get the whole destruction of the city where Rodan, I love it, just flies over the, the buildings and then, it, of course, it cuts to models just getting fucking destroyed. Yeah. And then Rodan is able to perch himself on top of the building. And he's like flapping his wings, destroying all the buildings. They had to, they had to put extra reinforcement on the building that he stood on because the suit was so heavy. Yeah, I just love this whole this whole destructive scene of, you know, Rodan just going to town on the city and just kind of by standing on top of a building, just flapping his wings, he is destroying everything. This is when you get the one and only time, I guess, from what I've read, Dan, you could correct me if I'm wrong, that Rodan uses the like the power breath yes this is the only well the only time he uses this like supersonic breath or something like that yes and the reason i actually scuttled over to my phone oh if i could find it our stuff yes i have a very very old thing that i did i actually used to back in the day if you can find this had a, a video series a long oh, time ago. I'm, I'm going to make sure that he tags that under there. Oh, please. I'm sorry. But anyway, it's a really old one I did. And it was actually talking about this breath weapon that he only used once. Because growing up, me and a lot of other people thought, it's just his wings. And then you watch it, it's like, no, he's clearly shooting some kind of wind-based projectile out of his mouth. And we got some Rodans that have used other things, like projectiles from our mouth, but not this. And it was an old series I did back in the day called Monster Bites. And they're really short, and I just remember, I think the Rodan was the first one that I did. You know, I talked about the the version of Rod, the book. I also talked about Rodan's, uh, there was a no, the novel, the novelization of Rodan. Mm-hmm. But it's been so long, I don't fucking remember. It's like a three-minute video. I made it six years ago. It's on the internet. All right. So, silly little thing. It's relevant. But yeah, this is, no, okay. okay. But uh, no, yeah, that's, that's you are correct, Parker. This is the well, the only time this has really ever happened, and they never brought it up again. They're like, mm-hmm. okay, this is good. So yeah, one and done. Yeah, one and done. They were just like, yeah, it didn't work out. Didn't look good. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I thought it looked good. I thought it looked great. That was cool. So that was idea. yeah, this is when you find out there's two Rodans because <laughs> you see the one getting attacked, and then you see one flying around. And they're like, oh, oh, I do like the, another thing I mentioned is when. When Rodan first comes, like after we're done flying around and stuff, and when he's on the building, it's when he jumps down off the building yeah. and like smashes into the top of the other building and the trains and shit. Yep. Fucking love that shot. Awesome. I love oh, those so close good. up destructive shots on these oh, old monster so movies. Fantastic. 
Uh, that's why I love the original Godzilla, just like the the whole power line scene in the original Godzilla where he's destroying all the power lines. Oh, so good. Oh, yeah. He yells at the birds in, that, in the bird cage. Yeah. You cocksuckers. Yeah, especially <laughs> when it's in black and white and it just makes it a little mm-hmm. bit better. So, yeah, they, you also, they, they, everybody kind of groups back up and they're like, Rodan, it's causing so much destruction. And now there's two. What do we do? And so they make a plan to pretty much bombard the cavern that they're nesting in. Mm-hmm. And you got the one guy. Is it Segura who's the one who's like, I don't think this is a good idea? Or was this the was this a one of the scientists? It was the geologist, dude. The guy they caught, talked earlier about. Hey, where's the epicenter of that was earthquake? Kashawagi. Yeah, I think so. He's like, I he's don't the think paleontology guy. No, uh, no, that uh, that's that's um, different guy. It's the other dude they call it the actual episode the the seismology guy. And you're like, where's oh, the okay, at? I know what you're he's like. It's between the mines. That guy. He's yeah. only in like two or three shots in the whole movie. Yeah, but he and like disagrees with the whole thing. Uh, about he's doing it because if they because they're trying to essentially cause the volcano to erupt yeah and he's worried about that running down into the valley and possibly killing people, people or destroying right. land he's like it's, a, like it's like we thought about that we're gonna evacuate everybody don't worry so they evacuate the village and then uh, uh keo doesn't go she comes back and is with uh you know she wants to be with Siguru and so she just, uh, they all go to like this one valley where you can see the cavern in the volcano in the distance and they're just going to bombard it. And this bombarding scene feels like it goes on for about 45 minutes. It's it just long. constant it's so bombardment. It's just explosions and it goes on forever. And uh, it was one of those things where I could have like gotten up, made some popcorn, did some stretches, coming back and this bombardment would still been happening. It's some stretch. It's very long. Yes. Um, Longer than it should be. Yes. So the volcano finally erupts. And I like the the effect of the explosion. And then I'm I I don't I'm guessing they used something really hot because you have the scene where uh both the Rodans pop out of the, the volcano and they're flying around, and then one just kinda flutters down and falls into the lava and just sets on fire. Yep. I was told this was an, an accident that one of the cables broke on the model, causing it to crash into whatever material they were using and it set on fire. And so that's how they got this ending. And because of the fact that the, one of the Rodans died, the other one kind of ended himself because it's lover died. And so, because I watched the, when I watched the Japanese version, when I got done with this, I was very confused why it ended that way. I was like, why, why, what? It just ends like that. Like they both just mm-hmm. fall into lava and just set on fire. Yep. And I mentioned it in a, in a discord channel I'm in and someone mentioned, uh, you know, someone told me that that was the reason mm. that happened. So it was a, it was an accident that the first model fell in set on fire and so they kind of came up with the idea to well they're in love right they're you know these creatures that were supposed to be you know the last of their kind so the other one kind of just ended them this ended themselves to whatever was like a mate for life kind of could, thing could have been yeah in the um, in the japanese version it's just uh all the the entire group of uh people that you've been following throughout the movie are watching this happen there's really no dialogue it's just kind of seeing the two Rodans like go up in flames in the English version. There's a narration uh, from Siguru about why it happened. Yep. And uh, yeah, that's uh, what was the reason they give in the English remark? I, I can't remember. Um, it, it, so it was pretty much like it was unwilling to live without its mate and it just dove in there to, you know. Makes sense, I guess. I, I honestly thought it was just honestly growing up. I just thought it was from the volcano. Yeah, I don't know. Like, I legit was... thought it was like the gases and heat from the volcano, and, just, and then just <coughs> I just I was them. I was very confused after watching the initial version, and um, yeah, and then someone explained to me kind of the reasoning behind the whole thing. And to be honest, now that I've been told that and I watched it again with that narration, I think that was the one 
part of the English version where I was like, okay, I actually like the fact that we kind of get told. That's fair. Kind of why it all happened that way. So because it seems kind of random at the end, yeah. especially like you said. Yeah, I was, it was like, what, what is what is going on here? Uh, but yeah, that is Rodan from 1956 or 1957 or 1958, whatever version it tells you when you go to watch it. Yeah, <laughs> Originally, right. it came out in 1956. Well, yeah, there is no other Rodan movie. Rodan is in other movies. Yes, so Rodan would become one of Godzilla's adversaries uh, later on. Of course, we've covered in Buddy. in Buddy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He does in a few. I, 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 as we go along, I'll be watching more of the older Godzilla movies. But we did cover a movie with Rodan in it. One of his his latest appearance in a movie with uh, Godzilla King of the Monsters back in 2019, mm-hmm. and uh, I thoroughly enjoyed that version of him and i love his design in that movie i love how destructive he is how he looks how he's he is born from a volcano and he has like the the flaming wings and to be honest i'm not i'm very surprised they didn't give him like fire breath but uh i guess they were being kind of faithful to his you know original counterpart so that was the 90s movie. Yeah. That was the 90s movie. He had a uranium ray. It's cool. yeah. All right. Well, now let's talk about our thoughts on the movie. Dan, you kind of already gave your thoughts. Do you have anything you want to add before we uh, jump over uh, to Angela? I, I think this is a really good movie. And I think that is if any kaiju person, kaiju fan, or anybody that's interested in that, especially if you've watched like King of the Monsters, like where did these monsters come from? You should watch this one. Because the the at least I know Parker said watch both of them. I don't disagree, but I think you should watch the Japanese version yes. first because it is the original vision for the film. And I think atmospherically, it's way better than the English one. I think the English one dumbs it down and cuts a bunch of shit out and adds a bunch of shit that doesn't need to be there. Except for I do agree with the ending narration, kind of explaining a little bit, because if you're going to like, what the fuck is going on? Right. It. I think the ending is, is, a, is a point of contention for some people. But outside of that, I think the movie's a really good movie. I think it flows well. The effects are fun. Um, the, the the love interest, the love story between Kyo and Shigeru is way turned down in the Japanese version, where in the English one it's like cranked up. And I'm okay with that. I was English, very, yes. I was I was okay with the fact that we didn't get this. Like I don't need it. I just didn't. Need it, it. You can tell they're into each other, but it's not like jammed down your throat. Like it's in the English when they feel like I know it was the style at the time where like there's got to be the main character and there's got to be the love interest right. and then there's monster shit. They don't have to go on dates to fancy restaurants. No, no. That, that doesn't need to happen. After They're... meeting <laughs> five seconds ago. Yeah, I know. Like, I agree. But we have, and also we have an establishment. Like, they've been together for a yeah. while. Mm-hmm. And, and you don't even find out Goro's, Goro is her brother until, like, after the incident, which right. in the, in the yeah. English one, they which just originally like, I thought that immediately. I, I just mistranslated that, like, I must have missed the subtitles or something. I thought that Goro was the husband of that woman and i was like oh and then i was like oh wait what 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 is what are they talking about now like <laughs> trying to he's, move just, in. he's just moving in real quick like okay fuck no, dead but... now she's mine uh <laughs> <laughs> but no it's great it's, it's great i'm like <laughs> the two rodans was nice because you wouldn't think there'd be two you think there'd just be like the right. titular rodan mm-hmm. uh but it, it's it's a good time and then the music's fantastic because it's here care of kube and we have yep. evil squeaky yep. toys like i talk about so Go ahead, dear. Oh, what he said. Sorry. Uh, I I liked it a lot. I don't have much more to add. <laughs> She's off her game today. I am. I don't She's feel good. Well, so. I'm here. Yeah, we, which we appreciate you being here. This, well, as I stated before, this is my first time, and I, you know, I went into this with an open mind, as I always do with these uh, older films, especially since we've covered so many over the last few months between the multiple shows that we do, and. I yes, this movie is. I think if a, a lot of if a younger generation looked at this movie, they would probably say it's crap, because the fact is, you know, it the the effects work and and the oh my god, you can see the wire there and stuff like that. Like things where I think you look at them years later. Like if you saw a movie from like the eighties or nineties and you saw wire work or something, I think you you judge it more. But back in the fifties, you're like, oh, that's pretty fucking cool. Like what they were able to do. Um, the Rodan suit. Or the Rodan, some of the Rodan scenes were kind of weird for me. I didn't really like the flying scenes. I thought it looked, okay. they looked odd. I do like the close ups of the Rodan suit itself. 
with uh, Haru uh, Nakajima inside of it, you know, if in in the work that he was able to do and the sacrifices he made for that movie and almost dying in that movie. Uh, you know, it just looked really good. I also want to shout out all the awesome fucking posters because for some oh, reason, God, yeah. movie posters just don't look this cool anymore. Yeah. Like no, these old, don't. like, just hand-drawn movie posters uh, with, for these monster movies that half the time don't even look remotely like the thing that you see in the movie. <laughs> right? Well, even the English one's really good. Like, the drawn, like, the one we Yeah, that's the, the one I book. used uh, on, on X when I was... Uh, you know, sharing my, you know, for people to share their thoughts because I wanted to make sure people knew what the hell we were watching. <laughs> no, yeah, exactly. I do have so, one more. Once we're all done with all this, I have one more thing to add about. <clears throat> hey, you can you can translate. Well, not a poster. You can't. Yeah, you can. I like. I do like the Japanese. Google posters, Translate but... has the real time translate. There's English a translate posters. for Eng- or I don't care. Um, but yeah, I really. I mean, I felt this movie was fun, and to be able to experience both versions of the movie, it's the first. I think it's the first time I've ever done that for an episode where a movie has multiple versions. Usually, like if we watch a movie that has like a director's cut and a theatrical cut, one of us will watch either or, and then we kind of d- just discuss. Well, multiple, more than one of us actually watch both versions, and I think one of the. I think one of the main reasons is the fact that this is not a very long movie. Uh, both yeah. versions being less than an hour and a half, which is awesome. Uh, but sometimes the movie doesn't feel like an hour and a half or it's runtime. Like it actually feels a little longer. Like I feel like it's it's very engaging. Uh, you don't see Rodan for a, for over halfway through the movie or more. Uh, hey, you can kind of see maybe where Spielberg got inspired for when he had to make Jaws into a movie that you don't see the shark for a long time. And I know that wasn't his original vision, but I think he might have. I know that he has stated he grew up watching these, uh, you know, kaiju movies, you know, and so maybe that was uh, it helped, you know, movies like maybe Rodan uh, helped him, you know, come up with the idea of, okay, we can since the shark's not working, we can make an effective movie by not showing the creature. Cause you don't see Rodan, like I said, for more than halfway through the movie, you see these, uh, you see the little, uh, what the heck, the mega neurons and, and, uh, and stuff like that. And you, you see like the glimpse, you don't see Rodan, I think until the egg hatches, right? Where you no, see no, the flashback. Yeah. So. And, and that's that's another thing I like is kind of like the escalation because you get yeah. this real centralized like like I talked about the mines like you get that claustrophobic like there's this issue in the mine and everything focuses on the mine like you get a few shots like the village outside but for the most part it's the fucking mine like that's what we worry about and we got this shit killing people and then it just goes fucking big scale when Rodan yeah. comes out and it kind of goes away from the horror and ends up just being like a, a sci-fi ed, ed fantasy yeah if you will. You know, a lot of, uh, and, and of course, Hollywood and, and, and movies, or just the movie business in general, are full of remakes and stuff like that. But I would love to see Toho actually tackle Rodan again. Uh, I know. In, so his, in his own movie. And maybe, I mean, even if they were to take this movie and kind of do the same story, um, but kind of tweak it. And then, of course, you know, you'd be able to design Rodan in more of a modern look. Uh, and you know, kind of like what Toho's doing Godzilla right now. I think it would be really cool. I mean, like I said, seeing him in King of the Monsters was really cool. I think his design looked awesome there. But of course, you can do whatever. You know, you just. I think it would be awesome to see Toho tackle a lot of these, um, these kaiju's that kind of don't get the love unless you see them in like the legendary films. So, and even then, like Rodan being, you know, one of the OGs, like the second non well. Sorry, the second non Godzilla kaiju because we got Angiris before this, and that dude gets shit on the most. It feels like or Angiris. I know, poor fucking guy. But anyhow, um, he's choking on that hamburger. But <laughs> um, his jaw ripped. Well, he was, he was he was trying to save his life. Anyway, uh, he's trying to do mouth to mouth. Like, he just ripped it off. Damn it. Yeah, uh, pretty much. But he is. I, one thing for me is like I love Toho movies. I love them, but I hate how, especially in the newer ones, it's been like. Like, lately, they've been just doing Godzilla stuff. But, like, when another kaiju comes along, it's, like, it's either Mothra, King Ghidorah, or Mechagodzilla. And that's it. Like, it's, like, I, I get it. Those are your three most popular. But you have a whole backlog of ones you've never done. And you can make new ones. In yeah. fact, Megan Urin, in this movie, ended up becoming the main villain of a Godzilla movie. Megan Urin ended up be growing up into uh, Megagirus, which was the 2000 
Godzilla film, 2001, but 2000 Godzilla film, the one right after Godzilla 2000. So they grew up into big ones. But it, it, it's like it's cool when you reuse ideas like that, but they don't do that very often. And I know it's not as much money. Everybody likes the fucking... It's like anything nowadays. Everybody wants the Hallmark yeah. shit, the big names. Yeah. Like it's... But they did. I want to mention this. This is one thing I want to mention before we get out of here. I grew up playing Godzilla Monster of Monsters on the Super Nintendo. I mean, regular Nintendo. I'm sorry. And they were going to make a, a, an NES game for Rodan, but they canceled it and ended up making Godzilla 2. So, interesting fact. I actually remember <laughs> advertisements for it. Coming in 1991, Rodan, for the NES, but it never happened. Uh, I need to play that. Maybe that's something... I'm going to put you on the spot, Parker. If that's something people want to see, I can do it on Patreon. Here we go. Here we go. Play the original Godzilla and the NES. I'd play the shit. I love that fucking game. Yes, so uh, those are our thoughts on the movie. And so now we're going to go over to social media and pull up all the comments that you guys left us, and we got a couple. Uh, only on X slash Twitter. Our first one is from uh, Cinema Medicine Podcast or at Cinema Medicine on X. Nice. That's one of the best early kaiju films. So good. Uh, we got one from. We got one from Dan uh, from Dissect That Film who just said, I'm right here. I've been here the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we got one from Charles at uh, Repub9989 who said, one of the best movies. I am partial to the English dub. I saw this when I was like six or seven, so like 1986. I remember renting it from a Pathmark that had a video store in the back with the black boxes they would give you. Oh, so Very cool. Like very I said, cool. I always remember, I never rented it. My uncle owned it. And I just, like I said, I remember the old video treasure VHS. Uh, our next one is from our buddy Dustin at Flicks and Friend Podcast, who I think is just uh, tagging us, uh, his cohort, Paul, who is a, a big kaiju fan, big Godzilla fan. Uh, and uh, I was hoping he was going to leave a, a comment, but he didn't. So, Paul, come on, man. Come on, man. The kaiju movie, right? man. I'm waiting for you. All right. We'll talk later. No, I have uh, to that's your shout out, by the way. I have to go back and watch their. And our last one is from Joe from Movie Dumpster, who says, it's great. I thought it was pretty damn scary when I first saw it. All the mind stuff is great, and I love when the Mega New... Why? Mega Neuron? Mega Neuron. Mega yeah, Neuron. It's, it's, yeah, it's, well, yeah, I want to translate yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, attack the village at night. Yeah. Dude, so good. Thank you so much, Joe, for leaving a comment. Thank you to everybody for leaving man. a comment on uh, Rodan. Yeah, thanks, guys. <laughs> So now we're at the end of the show. Of course, this is where we do all our plugging and all that fun stuff. We want to thank everybody for, of course, supporting the show. Uh, we do have a Patreon, patreon.com slash dissect that film, where we have uh, a couple tiers where we, um, I say you get episodes early, but I am so far behind right now. I haven't been able to release episodes early like I usually do, but hey, I, we appreciate the support nonetheless. And uh, at our $5 tier, we have, two exclusive shows where we have the monster zone, which we've mentioned many times because we talk about movies pretty much uh, like this. The most of the movies that we cover on that show are like the movie we just covered. Uh, they're hosted. That show is hosted by our wonderful co-host, Dan and Angela. Why do you keep pointing at me? And yeah, we, uh, it's, it's a lot of fun. And um, yes, it is. Uh, it's, it, uh, we just appreciate everybody who, who supports us over there on Patreon because uh, you help you guys help us, uh, pay for some things that we use for the show. Uh, we got, you know, we put, you know, some, so a little bit of money gets put into the show. <clears throat> and so that, uh, the money you guys give us is, uh, it helps us out and we appreciate all the support. And we hope uh, what we give back uh, is um, enough. If in, make sure you let us know if you'd like to see some, some things on the Patreon uh, that we're not doing, or if you have any suggestions or, you know, s s future stuff you want us to, to cover. Um, you can follow us at Dissect That Film on all the social medias, X slash Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, uh, Threads. We are now on Blue Sky because I got one of those codes, so we're over there because I needed another social media to keep up with. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> Listen, if Twitter g burns to the ground, at least we have Let some it options. Burn. It'll, no, it won't burn to the ground. Just fill it with porn, porn spam bots. What do. <laughs> yeah, they'll never go away. <laughs> And lastly, we always want to tell you, please 
help us out by going to your podcast app of choice and leaving us five-star reviews because the more five-star reviews we get on the show, the more, uh, the higher we raise in the list there and the more ears we go into and the, the newer, and we, we gain new listeners and, uh, it just helps the show out a lot. We, we, you know, we feel we do a pretty good job with the show and, uh, you know, we, you know, we, we, we look at the, we look at the downloads every day and clearly the people like to listen. So, if you like to listen to our, sh- if you like to listen to the to our show, if you like our show, and you haven't left a rating for us on whatever app you use, please do that because it it greatly helps us, and we greatly appreciate all the support that you guys give us. It's free; it doesn't cost you a dime. Um, we don't gain anything other than just trying to get us up there on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Good Pods, or any podcast app that is out there. And uh, if you, and of course. Go to our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash at dissect that film, where you, we do the video versions where you can see our faces and you can see me waving right now. And uh, just hit that like button, subscribe, it's free. And then leave us a comment on the episode. And tell yeah. us what you liked about the episode or just tell us what you thought about the show. Like, dislike, you know, tell us we suck and do whatever you got to do. Yeah, uh, please. <laughs> but I think that's about it. Do we have any, do you have anything else you want to add before we get the heck out of here? No, just excited for the rest of the month, dude. Yes, because Thanks next week, everybody yeah. Thing. Yes, thank you very much. And uh, next week, we will have some guests. We have the gang from the yeah. Give Me Back My Horse slash Action Movies podcast. I'm very excited. I don't know if the whole gang is going to be here, so I'm just going to say the gang. There's two. There's either going to be three guys here, extra people, or there's going to be two, or maybe one. I don't know, but they're going to be here to talk about the 2003 remake of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, which is my pick for Spooktober. So I'm very excited about that. So, you know, stay tuned because Spooktober isn't over yet. We still got two more weeks uh, with some spooky episodes. It's going to be a lot of fun. So next week, Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2003 with Gimme Back My Horse slash Action Movies. Yeah, we're, we're ready, baby. Until next time. I am Brett Parker. That is Dan and Angel of DNA Gaming. We are Dissect That Film, and this has been the Dissect That Film Podcast, episode 128. We'll see you all again next time. Say spooky. Yeah.